What's up guys, it's James, and I wanted to do a video showing you how I use the buffer rack extension from PEF in some of my productions. I usually use it in a live performance mode with a controller like this uh, Livid, Livid Ohm 64 right back here. And I use it to give me some control over some really interesting stutters and pitch sweeps and bit crushing, you know, all the fun stuff that buffer does. And when you use it with a control surface like, like this Livid or whatever control surface you have, it becomes really playable, almost like an instrument on itself. And I want to show you how I set it up. I usually have it connected to the master section in the Reason Mixer. Um, it's a pretty easy thing to set up as far as the cables go. Uh, there's a couple of things that you need to remember when you're setting it up, and I'll show you that in the video as well. And I'm going to do a little live performance and kind of show you what it looks like and sounds like in action. All right, so let's get started and have some fun. Okay, one of the first things I wanted to show you is how I would use buffer connected to the master section to affect the entire output of the song. It's pretty simple. Um, if you look here up at the master section, you're basically going to just flip the rack around, put buffer in there, and connect the insert effect to and from device to the buffer input and output, respectively. Uh, if you were using some sort of a mastering device or something else on the master section and you still wanted to use buffer, you could still do it. You would just take the master output left and right, the main outs, and come into the buffer input here, and then come back on out to your audio I.O. on the hardware device up at the top. Pretty simple stuff. Um, the other thing, too, is that when you're using buffer, it is a, an effect that's controlled by playing it on a MIDI keyboard. So in order to do that, you actually need to have a sequencer track created in your sequencer in order to play buffer. And normally when you create the effect, it doesn't make that sequencer track. So what you need to do is you right-click on it, Scroll down and right here where it says delete track, it would normally say create track. You select that and you'll see a track in your sequencer like you see up here. And now when you play any notes on your controller keyboard, you'll be able to trigger the different note dividers for the buffer beat repeat effect. The last thing is setting up your controller and some knobs or sliders or buttons on it to affect some of the parameters that are on the front panel of the buffer. So that's done by just using, I do it the easy way, which is just using the remote override edit mapping function. And that's done by just right clicking on a knob or a parameter inside a buffer, selecting the remote override mapping, um, twisting the knob or pushing the button, what have you on your control surface, hitting OK, and you're good to go. And just like that, you'll be able to control that parameter. And I just repeated that process for all the other parameters that I wanted to control. So I've got a little performance here I'm going to do for you on an angry dubstep tune that I was kind of tweaking on the other day and show you a little bit of how I would use this in a live performance. Okay, let's have some fun. <laughs> 